Welcome back to Misery Island, Population Me, where I give the breakdown on all the messed up stuff because I'm a weirdo who likes finding and reading these kinds of books because I can't help my morbid curiosity. Today's breakdown is from a famous well-known author, that is Yusuke Kishi, who most famously made Chen Kaiori, aka From the New World, aka yes, that one video everyone posts non-stop hate comments on because they don't like Digibro's opinion and hot takes on the entire series, but it's on my channel and it's not his because he deleted it from his, but it's on mine so they can play it on mine, and I'm gonna stop talking about this. But you must be wondering, why haven't I heard about this book? Well, the answer to that is because it's incredibly messed up, depraved, and somehow received a feature-length film that's equally as disturbing and made by Mike Takashi, who made Addition and Ichi the Killer. So, I'm surprised Spooky Rice hasn't made a video on this. So, what is this book about? Well, you know what this book is about because of the title of this video, but this book is all kinds of spaghetti and meatballs messed up. So, there's the front and the back. At the front of the story, the book is about a charismatic and handsome teacher named Hasumi who goes to extra mile for his students so they can succeed. But behind the charming facade Hasumi always dangles for his press release, he's a lying psychopath that murders over 40 people before the book even begins and manipulate people and events around him so that everything goes his way, all for the sake of building his perfect kingdom, also known as his happy sugar life. He knocks off parents, bullies, unruly delinquents, kids, nothing's off this man's radar including killing animals for funsies. So if you want to know all the gory and messed up details about Hasumi's misadventures in a Japanese high school, stay tuned for the breakdown. This book is so messed up, I can't even use my Michael Jordan intro because Hasumi's already a monster before the story even begins. I got a bar of spookies and if you haven't watched any of his videos and enjoy mine, go watch his disturbing movie breakdowns because I'm gonna have to use the movie footage here because the book is bored as hell. But speaking of the movies, this movie adaptation, in comparison to the book, I mean, it's, it's really something. Yeah. Pause, this is post edit me and me, but man, just imagine it. Being able to identify a woman by sniffing her underwear. <laughs> that is wild. Which reminds me how fragile life is. And honestly, the movie and book shows how it really doesn't take too much effort for a person to get bumped and drift away from the mortal coil. Even just recently, I was reminded of that while riding on an e-scooter on a grocery run when I witnessed a car accident literally 15 meters away from where I was riding. And the moment when the driver dropped the F-bomb and began cursing out the other driver like a drunken sailor. But getting into the story details, normally I'd give a description of the entire book start to finish then provide an analysis but not so much in this video because I'm feeling mighty lazy and like I said this book is kind of boring so I'm gonna go through the movie footage and put that on screen because that's more entertaining than reading the walls of text in the book so this video will include the highlights and the climax event of the book which of course is the school shooting which most likely everyone just came to see so yeah this book bears heavy similarities to movies like angst and the house that Jack built or in this case the house that Hasumi built being a study of the depraved mind of this unhinged psychopath running amok in society, leaving nothing but misery, bodies, and misfortune in his wake. But when that's not happening and the book's characters aren't molesting, torturing, raping, and killing kids, the book is just equally as boring as the movie when the moderately lovable psychopath isn't being entertaining because even though he's the main character, he's not the main focus of the book. Meaning, when Hasumi is attempting to build his perfect kingdom, or monologuing about how fucked in the mind he is planning to carry out his murder fantasies, the book has overly long narrations and side quests about the hardships the students and teachers alike must endure in high school which is as equally unrealistic as someone believing the JoJo ending is canon in Metamorphosis. Therefore, I'm going to highlight all the parts I find interesting because this channel is all about me and if you, the viewers, want to pull apart the extra details, you're going to have to read the book yourself or view the movie. But at the very start of the movie's timeline, Hasumi is a monster even in his adolescence, killing his parents at the bright brim age of 14 and framing it like a break-in by a deranged lunatic all because his parents wanted to ship him off to some mental asylum because they knew he was always a demented sociopath unable to feel empathy for other human beings which was confirmed in their deaths. Fast forward years later, Hasumi is doing better than me, having time to commit happy fun time murders to tickle his pickle 
while landing a spot at Harvard University, where he encounters another serial killer conveniently with his instinctual lizard brain named Clay, who's named Dave in the book, who he partners up with and commits more killings out of sheer joy and entertainment because they're both fucked in the head. I mean, just look at him. Carrying buckets of human blood, bones, and organs, and them splashing around in it like a magic carp grasping for air out of water in Pokemon. It's messed up, just wickedness and evil. But at the end of the day, Hasumi kills Dave, or Clay, and leaves the US because he doesn't like Clay's nature of quote unquote killing for fun, even though he does that. But there's more to it, but there kinda isn't. It's read the book. But in very short terms, Hatsumi's like Bateman from American Psycho. He heals people to progress his career and survival, but he has a mix of Dexter in the sense that he also feels the urge to kill and gains pleasure from it, so that just makes him a predator. Fast forward again, and Hatsumi legitimately becomes the American Psycho, and he becomes a European investment baker, gets embroiled into a conspiracy involving manipulating stock, which in turn allows his boss to discover that Hasumi's a psychopathic serial killer, and even though the boss and the evil businessmen kill people too, they kill people for profit, which is acceptable in America because capitalism, and they want to kick Hatsumi out of the company because he kills people for pleasure, which is just evil and psychopathic. So Hatsumi gets exiled from America because the evil wealthy businessman is well connected and has that kind of authority. But the reason why they don't knock Hatsumi's pineapple off his head is because during his employment at the company Morkstrin, not only did he collect mountains of incriminating information on their illegal operation, he actually has audio files of these evil businessmen doing evil businessmen type things, which would completely ruin the company. So out of survival and mutually assured destruction, Hatsumi and the Morgan Stern Investment Bank part ways on the worst terms, giving Hatsumi the opportunity to flee to Japan and live his best life as an English teacher in a Japanese high school. But guess what? He starts killing the students he's exhausted by, leading to him kinda sorta being linked to multiple suicides that occurred throughout that one school, so he bolts to another. And this is where the book and the movie begins, and I'm going to be really loose about the events of the plot. To start off, Hasumi has to deal with the high school problems like bullying, student sexual harassment, teacher sexual harassment, wait, yeah, that's right. The teachers are sexually assaulting the students. Not the reverse like in Gossip Girls when the students sexually harass the teachers and they entrap the teachers using their hormones, but the teachers are legitimately thirsty for the students. They like them young like that. Like, seriously. Just degeneracy and perversion. Could you imagine going to school and have the teacher roll on you like this? You know Continuing, one of the big problems that the school's facing according to the principal is cheating. I mean, they got some more problems than that, but if he wants to put that as a priority, you need to get some help and reevaluate your learning curriculum. But like I was saying, everyone in the school is cheating because that's what all the cool kids are doing. So what Hatsumi does is wrangle up all the students' cell phones prior to whatever exams they're taking and then uses a cell phone jammer to completely prevent any cheating during those said exams. I mean, that's how you know something's up. Man's got a cell phone jammer. No one has, no one normal has a cell phone jammer. <laughs> but after using the cell phone jammer, this causes a group of students that were cheating on exams to become suspicious of the advisor of the radio club named Tasiri, who's a loner physics teacher who's jealous of Hasumi because he's too cool for school. But when this group of kids are confronted by Tatsuri, who's eavesdropping on them, who clarifies that he was not responsible for jamming the cell phones in school. Everyone's suspicious because that's what someone would say if they were, you know, doing the thing with the thing. So anyway, one kid named Kisuke for some reason suspects Hasumi for some reason because he's sus like that. But what they don't know is Hasumi has the whole school wired up with bugs. So he knows that they know that something's not right and they're suspicious of him, which he doesn't like. But because word travels fast in high school, this leads a select group of students to believe Hatsumi is jamming everyone's cell phone in the school. But as you've noticed, if these students put an ounce of time into studying, instead of being freelance investigators trying to figure out who did what, maybe they wouldn't need to cheat. But we'll come back to that later. Because right now, a student named Rena is being bullied, which causes her parents to constantly pester the school staff 
about how their kids being treated like a punching bag, which Hasumi is of course annoyed and exhausted by. So he goes to that said parent's home, notice the bottles of water along the homestead, which is used apparently to keep away cats, which I didn't know was a thing, and replaces all those said bottles of water with kerosene. So when that said parent tosses a cigarette bud on the street, he lights up faster than Johnny Storm from the Fantastic Four, meaning we aren't seeing this guy ever again. Meanwhile, continuing with the adventures of Keisake, who I'm just gonna continually refer to as K now, K and Tatsuri, continue to play private investigators and start digging up all the dirt about Hatsumi's past because Tatsuri is jealous of him and Kei wants to continue his cheating circle for profit and wants to stop being picked on by bullies. But again, because American Psycho has the whole school bugged, he's listening in to the entire conversation, which includes Hatsumi's past work history and his educational background, which he doesn't like. In response to this, Hasumi kills Tatsuri on the train and makes it look like a suicide while Kei obviously freaks out and panics because he knows he's next and it wasn't a suicide which allows Kei to get captured by Hatsumi and tortured him for information until he dies. Leaving not only his group of friends suspicious but the school nurse he's having sex with suspicious too as to his disappearance. Fast forward days later, another girl named Mia is busted for shoplifting and isn't charged for her crime. But unfortunately for her, the PE teacher Chiba blackmails Mia because he's perverted and has a recorded admission of guilt of said shoplifting incident and threatens to release it unless he gives her, I mean, he gives her, I mean, she gives him sexual favors with his ultimate goal being to blow Mia's back out and split it in two. Now, of course, because Hatsumi's a serial killer, I mean, suave, he's able to deal with him by saying he'll go to the police, which causes him to back down. But in turn, Hatsumi starts getting his pickle tickled by Mia, meaning she isn't all pure and innocent as everyone thinks she is. She's okay with getting her back split in two, just not by the PE teacher. But back at school, Hatsumi threatens to reveal a gay relationship between another student and another teacher, which is shown in the movie. But again, if you're wondering how he knows this, it's because Hatsumi has been reading everyone's text messages, listening to everyone's conversation. Basically, he's got the entire school on 23 hour lockdown. Someone's getting piped in the bathroom, Hatsumi knows about it. Someone's taking Adderall, Hatsumi knows about it. Hatsumi knows everything. So under the said influence of blackmail and the gay teacher being outed, Hatsumi is able to ravage Mia's raviolis at that said teacher's house and not at school anymore and not his own because remember, he's a deranged serial killer and he doesn't have the best living conditions. But fast forward again, Hatsumi kills another kid but uses another cell phone he stole from someone he killed previously who was a student to cause tension between students to kill another student he didn't like and unfortunately for Mia, one night after she was done getting her patty cake pounded, she notices Kay's cell phone in Hatsumi's possession and you already know she's gotta die. She's seen too much. So during one of those school festivals, he lures her to the roof and knocks her ass out with a sock on a rock, tosses her off the side of the school building and leaves a suicide note. But sadly another student comes looking for Mia and finds a note. So he kills her too because of the implications she could possibly make. And now things are completely out of control as he has no clue how to proceed or hide this body with the student so nearby. So he locks the door of the roof, heads home to get his 12 gauge double barrel, returns to the school and he starts blasting to hide one person that he killed underneath a big mountain of corpses. So in the end, Hatsumi attempts to pin the crime on that one gay teacher trying to explain how he's unstable 
committed murder suicide with the kid he was sexually exploiting who he killed but that doesn't work out because during Hatsumi's shotgun rain rampage throughout the school he didn't notice he was recorded on a defibrillator which has him confessing to the murder suicide plot and him being a big time serial killer and him being outsmarted by two kids who lived throughout his rampage who we barely even know as characters by the way so essentially what I'm saying here is that these characters could have been rocks and the difference between the rocks and these characters is that the rocks are hard and these characters have no character. So by the time when the police have Hatsumi cuffed and doing their victory lap for doing absolutely nothing, Hatsumi fakes insanity because... <laughs> Let's go, partner. No way we'll be found responsible. Oh yeah, I forgot about the Norse mythology plot, but who cares? And it's off to Arkham Asylum, where he can hopefully get some help. It's at this point is revealed Mia also survived her five-story rooftop swan dive and is now wheelchair bound. And weeks later, Hatsumi is found guilty for mass murder, but is found mentally incompetent and labeled legally insane, meaning he got a life sentence, which is 25 years. But unfortunately, as the book ends, we skip 25 years later when Hatsumi is released from an asylum. It's revealed one surviving kid is now a teacher that hates his life and everyone else is busy doing whatever they're doing and Hatsumi's on a hunt for revenge because he remembers that they put him in jail and that they're supposed to be dead. Meaning as the book concludes, most likely all these characters who survived and were tortured horrifically are killed off and die miserably. The end. The book is a solid 6 out of 10. Bye!